Piano, guitar, trumpet, and human speech. What if I told you that all these sounds, along with other sounds in nature, are made out of bleeps? Let's explore the building blocks of sounds. Most of our first encounter with this bleeping sound was probably something along the lines of when you were a kid and watching trashy reality TV shows while your parents were not home. Every two seconds, you hear being used to censor out those bad words. Unlike these impure words coming out of their mouth, that bleeping sound is the purest form of a sound and it is called a sign tone. Of course, it is way more than something that is electronically generated to be used to censor out bad words on TV. The pitch or frequency of a sign tone can be described using hertz. This is 440 hertz. This is 250 hertz, which sounds bassier. And this is 880 hertz. So, higher the value of hertz, higher the pitch. Or how much more it hurts to listen. If we do what is called a Fourier transform, any sounds in nature, including musical instrument sounds, can be broken down into layers of different sign tones. Everything we know and love is made out of bleeps. Before I can explain this further, let's learn about spectrum analyzer and frequency content. Here's a spectrum analyzer that shows the frequency content of a sound in real time. You may have seen a circular spectrum analyzer on a YouTube video like this. Unless you're a whale or a dog watching this video, our range of hearing is from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. To better understand frequency content and spectrum analyzer, let's take a look at this trap beat that I quickly cooked up. This is the frequency spectrum of an 808 sound, which is that super low bass sound that we hear in trap music. So, most of the prominent frequency contents are in the lower frequency. These are the frequencies that we hear out of subwoofer that can rattle our whole room. And we see that there aren't that much higher frequency contents here. So, we wouldn't exactly use an adjective like bright to describe this sound. As a good contrasting example to an 808 bass, let's take a look at this hi-hat sound. These contain higher frequency contents. 4 to 8 kHz and above gives a sound its sizzly and bright quality. And we won't be able to just play a hi-hat sound and shake a whole room, because there aren't that much, if any, lower frequency contents. Okay, now that we have a better understanding of how to look at a spectrum analyzer, we can further explore the building blocks of sounds. So what exactly do I mean by saying that sounds are made out of bleeps? Let's play the note A4 on a piano. We can think of these peaks that we see here as different sign tones that are combined or layered together to create the overall piano sound that we hear. When we talk about a pitch of a note, in this case A4, we are talking about its fundamental frequency, which is often defined as the lowest frequency and usually the loudest in these layers of sign tones. In this graph, it is this lowest peak right here. It says it is 440 hertz. So let's take a look at a table that shows the note and frequency relationship. A4 is indeed 440 hertz. Quick side note, Ableton does things one octave lower. So when we say A4, Ableton says A3. Standards are confusing. Let us filter this sound so that all the frequency contents other than 440 hertz are filtered out and gone. And we roughly got ourselves a sign tone. Well, what about the other peaks? These frequencies that are greater than the fundamental frequency of a sound is called an overtone. Let's have a closer look. The next peak above 440 hertz is this one, which is about 880 hertz. Okay. What about the next peak? It's about 1320 hertz. Hmm, interesting. How about this one? 1760 hertz. 
We might be seeing some patterns here. Let's do some math. 440Hz, which again is the fundamental frequency of this piano note. And let us multiply that by 2. And we get 880, which was our second peak. 440 multiplied by 3 is 1320, the third peak. And 440 multiplied by 4 is, you guessed it, 1760Hz. Okay, 440 times 5 is 2200. Let's see if there is a peak there. Yes. So, these sine tones are related in integer multiple. These overtones and the fundamental frequency are part of what is known as the harmonic series. Is this the same with, let's say, a guitar? Let's take a look. Yes. But you can tell which one is piano and which one is guitar even though they're playing the same note or the same fundamental frequency. This is because the overtones in each sound are unique. One obvious difference is the loudness differences of the overtones between the two instruments. This distinct quality of a sound is called a timbre. Of course, when we looked at a frequency content of these instruments, it looks way more complex than what we covered. For example, noisy sounds like hi-hats don't have this harmonic series, which results in lack of a distinct pitch. And there are some other things to consider when analyzing spectrums. That being said, we do now have a great basic understanding of the building blocks of sounds. So, let's call it a day here. We now know enough to start exploring the amazing world of sound design. So, you might be thinking to yourself, well, if we stack sine tones on top of each other using a synth or pure data, we can create all kinds of different sounds and even try to emulate acoustic instruments. Yes, indeed. And that is called additive synthesis. So, here's an additive synth with both even and odd harmonics, and this is what that sounds like. And we can also do only odd harmonics, and that sounds like this. And who said we have to stick with whole numbers? The sound of bells have inharmonic spectrums, such as these. Let's have a listen. So, that was a very basic overview of sine tones, spectrums, overtones, harmonics, and additive synthesis. And if you're also learning pure data, I'll be uploading a tutorial video where we'll implement what we just learned and build an additive synth from scratch. In next week's video, we'll be exploring subtractive synthesis. Alright, see you in the next class. Bye.